Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. You know, when it comes to businesses, there's a fallacy, a phrase that's out there. When somebody says, ah, oh, they're a natural born leader, usually not the case. People aren't just born to be leaders. You do have an anomaly from time to time where it just, some people just take charge, but usually doesn't happen that way. They have to work on that and get to a certain point where they are effectively leading. We're going to talk with somebody today that helps people find that, that niche of being that leader. And specifically, if you're a business owner, you definitely want to listen and watch. Or if you're somebody that started a company, but really should be in more of a, a CEO leadership role, how do you make that transition? We're going to look at that today. He coaches people all the time. High-level companies, smaller companies, everybody, individuals that just want to up their game or improve their organization. He is Doug Thorpe, and he's back with us. Hey, Doug, welcome. Hey, Steve. Glad to be back with you. Yeah, good to have you here. We learned a lot. Last time we got together, uh, dug into, no pun intended, uh, a lot of what's going on here. But I want to look at that. When somebody starts a company or a business, and it's usually there's some talent there, there's a lot of passion that goes into it, but maybe not the leadership role is there. Yeah, they let's say it's a widget company. If somebody learned widgets, they love widgets, they have passion for it, but in terms of running the company, that's a, a whole different ball game, right? Right. Yeah, when we think about that true bona fide entrepreneurial startup idea, you know, you typically that is a founder with the great idea that, you know, the next great thing, the next great widget to use your example. And you're right, they come into it, they're passionate, they're energized, they're, they're mobilized, they, they just, they're confident they're the next best thing. So, they get busy building the business and busy is the key word because mm. it, for a lot of people, uh, I think the phrase was popularly said on TV, you quit, a, you quit a 40 hour job to take on an 80 hour job. <laughs> uh, but it's that passion for your thing. You're in control. You've got everything going. But what happens is if, if the company does in fact take off, if your idea really does have some traction and some legs, you quickly realize that you need to do some things to expand the business. You got to hire more people. You maybe have to increase your facility. You got to get more equipment. You, you start compounding and making the business more complex. And at some point in that journey, the, the passion that you had for getting it started is not enough to manage and lead that organization. I can completely relate to this because I've always done broadcasting, decided to open a marketing company about 15 or so years ago. I was in between radio jobs. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I like being creative. I love helping people. Uh, so yeah, it was all great. I don't know how to run a business. <laughs> I do now, but back then it was, I'm a creative solution guy. I'm, you know, this whole thing of leading a team and um, I figured it out. But if I had come to somebody like you, I would have fast tracked all of that. And, you know, learning through mistakes along the way, um, even hiring people, that was another one, you know, hiring the, you know, got a great team now, but oof, if I think back to, you know, what I went through, um, it, it was definitely challenging. And uh, so I can, yeah. I, I totally see this whole landscape right here. Well, I got started in this a long time ago in, in my early chapters of my career, I uh, worked for a bank and uh, actually spent 20 years there and my bank eventually became what is now part of the Chase organization. Mm -hmm. But in that process, I saw hundreds of companies privately held, so-called mom and pop shops was the word we always used back then. Yep. And again, they, they get on this journey, this trajectory of success. And I even named it the paradox of success, the, the growth and expansion and, and new revenue and, and new income opportunities actually end up cratering the business. If the founder doesn't make the shift to be a real CEO of the business mm. and for some, it may even include the extreme move to go hire a real CEO. You can, you can 
still own it. You can still run the business. You can still be the visionary, but maybe you need to go hire somebody to be your real day-to-day CEO to make things happen and continue that track of success. Do you find that a lot of people in that position, they founded a company, it's working, but they're not really thriving or growing. And it's not happening because they it's so close to them that they don't give up a lot of the responsibility. They don't delegate. They just say, I'll, 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 I'll handle that. I'll take care of that, um, which is just a counterproductive. But do you come across that? I do. There, there's actually a whole spectrum that, that gets revealed depending on the person. On one extreme of the spectrum, it's sheer ego. You know, this is my baby. This is my thing. Me, my, 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 and and they're not going to release. And sadly, the numbers suggest those are the ones that fail most often, or at least fail to achieve the real growth opportunity they could have had. The business that could have done a 2x, 3x, 10x, and then come up for sale with a big payday, right? And, and a lot of entrepreneurs say that's what they want to do, but they don't, in fact, ever get there. But along that spectrum, there are other people that just simply don't know how to make that move. They've, they've not been faced with those challenge, challenges before, and that's why a guy like me can come in and, and help guide them, you know, be their Sherpa to get them over that mountain and onto the other side. Can we look at some of the steps that are involved to help somebody go from the founder of a company, the owner, founder of a company, and then to get to the point where they're in a true growth trajectory as a CEO? Yeah. You know, a phrase that gets used a lot to frame this up is, is the idea of stop working in the business, but start working on the business. And if you're in the business you you might be the guy that opens the door every day and all the other employees come to work and and you're out on the shop floor turning widgets with everybody else your sleeves rolled up and so Mm -hmm. forth and that may be very necessary in those early stages but in those later stages no you've got to delegate you've got to release control of that day-to-day process and look at it as though it was an hourglass you can't be that person that's at that tip in the middle that really narrow passageway that every grain of sand has to go through the the founder can't be that bottleneck in the business and that's what a lot of entrepreneurs kind of evolve themselves into Hmm. so i have a framework i use with with company owners that i engage we go through four pillars it's it's a p word group people process product and performance. And there are details under each one of those pillars that can help you shape and frame where your business needs to be going. And I help identify some gaps that you need to work on. What was Doug, what you said before, you need to be not in the business, but work on the business. Right. Yeah. It's so true. (laughs) It's like, and, and, a lot of us are very humble. So we're proud to say I'm in the trenches every day. I know what it's like, but you're down here. You're not seeing it up here where you really need to see. And that's where the growth and that's the, you're not seeing the opportunity because you're, you're churning out the widgets every day. You're making sure that they're getting made the way they should. You're not delegating either. So I can see how that holds a company back in a big way. Totally. It really does. And as you see the team grow, you might be pleasantly surprised that once the people kind of catch fire, they get your vision, they, they, your passion for the thing you're doing rubs off on them. Mm. They may get energized and mobilized and they in fact may come up with better ideas than you could by yourself. Point. And you're not going to have time to work with them because you're so busy <laughs> you That's know, right. in the trench working on the widgets. How about some other thoughts here to go from a, a founder of a company to really being the CEO? Well, I, I think on the trajectory, a, a colleague of mine has a great framework that he likes to use. And he thinks about or encourages owners to think about their business in four stages. You've got the obvious takeoff phase. 
And then you've got kind of a develop a developmental phase where things are starting to kind of crystallize and stabilize. You're not as worried about cash flow as you were during that startup, but things are starting to click. Things are starting to come together. But then the third phase is really this thing we call takeoff. That's where you've got the real potential to start seeing 2x, 3x growth opportunity. And that's where the need for a little more formalized process and procedure, you you can't keep making it up on the fly. You know, the next order, you have to think about how you're going to do it. No, you need to have a system and a process that is scalable and repeatable to be able to sustain that growth. So it's a, call it a maturity process to take your company to that next level. What a, what is missing with a lot of these companies where, you know, call them, and I'm going to envision that these are smaller, call it the mom and pop type business where uh, it's very organic, but it, it, and I'd love to hear also the road, the, the procedure, the roadmap when you start working with somebody. Yeah. Well, I, I I think it is all about thinking of it in terms of stair steps. You, for your business to grow, you have to climb with it as a person. And unlike large, say, Fortune 500 companies where they've got mass, they've they've got scale that they can deal with. So, if they see a new market opportunity and they need to invest $10 million, that doesn't necessarily cause a blip in their, on their nice fancy financial charts and things. It's a line item for sure, but it's not necessarily a blip. Mm -hmm. But for the entrepreneur, that's not true. If you start your business and let's say you're in some kind of manufacturing, you have a, a punch press in the shop and you're that, press allows you to make a hundred of your widgets a day. Well, you get famous, you people start recognizing you. Now you got an order to do 300 widgets a day. Well, guess what? You got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a nice problem, but you got a problem because your machine can not only do a hundred a day. So if you want to fill that 300 a day, you got to what? You got to get two more machines. Mm. And two more machines might be two more people. And when you plot that on your financial graph, it's a giant stair step, perhaps a giant mountain that is hard to tolerate, hard to stomach if you're that owner and you struggle with that. But it, it really does become a mindset thing in, in the mind of that founder. And the point of where we started today is the idea that to be a successful owner that can allow your business to go to the next level, you've got to be willing to make those mindset shifts yourself. And that, that good problem to have, my first thought, again, being a business owner, is I wouldn't even have time to research the bigger machine because I'm in the trenches working day to day, making sure everything is okay. Now I've got this other's challenge over here. Um, Again, good problem to have. <laughs> Let's look at the the steps that go with you working with somebody to take them from that one point to the CEO role. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I'll go back to what I said. I've got a four pillar model. I call it the cover your basis business blueprint and okay. what it does. It allows a framework where I can sit down with the owner and we can kind of go through a little bit, call it an assessment, call it an inventory, call it a audit, but it's, it's checking through different areas that are critical to the success of the business, starting with the people, you know, mm -hmm. who have you brought in, who are you relying upon? What is, each one's capacity, what can they really do? And this is where we get into the age old entrepreneurial conundrum. It's common practice to hire friends and family to help you get started. But are they really the right people to be on the team? Really? Yeah. I mean, really? Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I can relate. And uh, usually, usually bad idea. But anyway, um, because well, it gets challenging. It gets challenging. I'll, all of a sudden, when the company does in fact take off and does have bigger demands on the team, you know, Uncle Bob or brother-in-law Bill or, you know, 
Cousin Sally may not be the right person. And I use the term, it's hats versus heads. You've, you've got, you know, if it's friends and family, you've got the heads around the table, but are they wearing the right hats? And can they even, does that hat fit them properly? Nice. If, if, if the job requires a certain hat and Cousin Sally can't wear that hat, then now you've got a problem. There's a gap there that happens. So doing a kind of an assessment of what the real functional positions in the company should be about and doing an alignment and an assessment of who you've got doing that and where might gaps be, that's a starting point. But even with that, you move to the next step, which is the question of process. Have you systematized things in a way that everybody who is responsible knows what the steps are so that you're not missing a step, you're not forgetting a step, you're not impacting your quality or your customer service. Mm -hmm. And all of that needs to get put into a scalable, repeatable process. When, when you work with these four pillars, do you often identify weak links in the chain immediately? Do you see, well, yeah, yes. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll bet. Inevitably, that's the value of going through just the quick flyover. And sometimes we can actually do that in one session. We, mm -hmm. we can make a quick assessment. It's almost like a little bit of a triage at the emergency room. Well, do you have a headache or is your leg broken? What are we really talking about here? Where, you know, where's the pain? And we, we can do that pretty quickly, but then over time, we typically go into a more exhaustive, more extensive analysis of all four pillar areas. And then that way we can identify the weakest links. I like that word and work to shore those up so that then over time you can sort of normalize everything and get on a good solid footing. Going back to just a moment of hiring friends or family, many situations I see where that is being done, a lot of times those people in the organization feel that they don't have to work as hard, that they, you know, you know I could take an extra day off. I could, they, they don't have the same drive. Uh, they feel that sometimes they're entitled. I see it all the time working with companies where, oh yeah, he's not around today <laughs> because you know, it's part of the entitlement and sometimes that's not right. So, you know, to be identified, how does somebody identify that they need to work with you? And, and, and re if they, they're thinking about, you know, I want to be in that CEO role. Uh, how do they know the, the company is not growing? Um, there's issues. Is, is that usually, the, you know, what are the telltale signs? A couple of the common symptoms that, that come and, and suggest that I could come in and help, it has to do with feeling like you're the, you're the owner sitting there saying to yourself, you know, I've had a good run. I, we're starting to crunch some numbers. I'm starting to see some nice cash flow for me personally, some payback for all my effort. But golly, I believe there's more, and I just can't figure out how to get there. I'm... Hmm. I, I mm. try to do certain things. I try to repeat certain things. I try to push and strive, but it just never happens. Uh, some may call it an invisible wall. You, you've kind of hit this invisible wall. Other people call it a plateau. You've sort of flatlined all of a sudden. Again, you're making money, but it's not the money you think you could be making. That's usually the first sign and associated close second to that is the idea of you're just fried. You're, you're working mm. 12 and 14 hour days. You, you hadn't had a vacation. Your, your kids don't recognize you when you do walk in the door. Um, it's those kind of moments that you realize something's got to give, something's got to change. I need to, I need to look at this differently. Ring the Thorpe bell. I think that's a big one right there where you, you realize that just, I am burned. I'm just, you know, it's working, but I know, and we, I, I'm a firm believer in that we all have the answers within us. And if within you're hearing in your mind that there's more out there for me, this company should be, could be doing a lot better. I just know it, but it's not happening. I don't really know why. 
I'm just, I'm tired. <laughs> but that, I think right there, what you said is, is the shining example of why somebody needs to go to the website, your website and uh, start a conversation. Um, and it doesn't, yeah, it's a conversation. It's a relationship. Um, and absolutely it's right for some, maybe not right for others, but you won't know until you know. Um, and why would you, this is, you birthed this baby, this company, everything you got went into it. Why wouldn't you want it to grow? Why wouldn't you want it to prosper and take a, a, another shape and form, right? Yeah, for sure. And that is the irony in it. And uh, that, again, is why I, I use the phrase paradox of success. You, you've got success, but it's, it's dragging you down and it's on the brink of blowing up. And you know it, you feel it, you just don't know what to do about it. One final question. How do you know when it's okay to invest in your business. By that, I mean, let's say you're a smaller company, you're taking on a lot of the roles that maybe somebody else should be doing, and that's part of the reason why it hasn't scaled up like it should. But how do you make that determination that, yeah, you know what, I am gonna hire somebody, maybe two, um, even on a part-time basis, another vendor to help me out. But how do you know to feel comfortable to make that investment? One of the most common checkpoints that people look at is the idea of if, if I'm the owner, I need to break down what's on my desk, what's on my calendar. What am I touching? What am I doing? And is it not practical to have somebody else, a lower pay grade, literally, doing that thing, whatever it is? And um, a, a colleague I met last year, he has a, a great uh, idea and he wrote a book about it. He says, stop repeating yourself. That was his way of describing this conundrum you're asking about. Hmm. If, if there's a step in your process that you are repeating multiple times every day or multiple times during the week, that's a red flag that somebody else or something else could be doing that and that you don't need to be doing it. Or you dread it. And True. you, you procrastinate. It's that one thing. Like I, I remember when, when I first started, it was like, all right, well, I guess I'll take care of the invoicing. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm going to do it. And I would dread it. And guess what? You don't do it. You don't get paid. So then time goes on. It's like time to hire a, a bookkeeper. Might add a competent bookkeeper. <laughs> Been there, done that. Uh, right. Doug, how do we uh, how do we find you? And how does it all start with that conversation? Steve, the easiest way is to hop over to my website. It's Doug Thorpe, T-H-O-R-P-E dot com. There's a link there to schedule a free discovery call. I'll be happy to chat with you a little bit and hear your story, learn what you're really looking for, and we'll determine whether or not that's something I can do to help you. And I love what you just said, hear your story, because I believe we all have a story. Absolutely. You know, we we had this vision for a business. And then that story continues with the business, but you know, the story needs to uh, have another chapter. And a lot of times we don't get to that chapter because we don't know how. Uh, so yeah, definitely. Once again, what's the website, Doug? Doug Thorpe. And that's T-H-O-R-P-E.com. Great talking with you. Love your insight and, uh, and your enthusiasm and your passion for what you do. You truly, you, you love helping people and help them uh, prosper. I yeah, do, I do. All right. Thanks so much for being here. All right, Steve. Thank you. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's it's crucial. 
Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicapped accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.